Hi folks, I hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you. Let's come before the Lord and pray. Father God, we come before you today and we acknowledge our weakness and sin. And Lord, we acknowledge that you're our God. We acknowledge that you're our Savior and our King. And Father, we give you the prayers and the glory today. And Father, we just pray as we look at your word that you bless it, Lord, for your glory and your honor. Bless it upon all our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, in your name. Amen. Okay, we're looking at praying in the Spirit. And if you'd like to turn to Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 18. Romans chapter 8, verse 1 to 18. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. We walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the light and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is an eternity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of the his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness but if the spirit of him that raised up jesus from the dead dwell in you he that raised up christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal spirit that dwelleth in you therefore brethren we are debitors not to the flesh to live after the flesh for if you live after the flesh you shall die but if through the spirit you do mortify the deeds of the body you shall live for as many as led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. I'll pray again. O oh God, we come to you today and we give you the praise and we give you the glory and we give you the. And Father, we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you will bless your word today. May we know your love and grace in the name of Jesus Christ and for your glory. Amen okay uh, so we're looking at praying in the spirit there are times in the Christian life when you know God's love you feel such joy that you want to burst out in praise but there are times when you're not on the mountain tops but in the dark valleys what we're looking at in Romans 8 chapter 1 to 18 is that when we're in the dark valleys God will give us help to pray, even though we might feel utterly weak. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9 and 10, it says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. This power may rest on me. When we're weak and we feel we can't do it, that is a place where we can be strong by the power of the Holy Spirit. C.H. Spurgeon says, a primary qualification for serving God with any amount of success and for doing God's work will well and triumphantly is a sense of our own weakness. I'll read that again. It's a brilliant quote. A primary qualification for serving God with any amount of success and for doing God's work well and triumphantly is a sense of our own weakness. So it's a dangerous place if we think we're healthy 
if we think that we can run the race in our own strength, if we think that we can serve God in our own strength, then we yeah, see it's Spurgeon writes, when God's warrior marches forth to battle strong in his own might, when he boasts, I know that I shall conquer, my own right arm and my conquering sword shall get unto me victory. Defeat is not far distant. God will not go forth with that man who marches in his own strength. God will have no strength used in his battles, but the strength which he himself imparts. So what help does God give when we're weak? Well, Romans 8, 26, 27. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. The Apostle Paul in Romans 8 is saying we can know God's strength, we can know God's love. Even when we're grieving and struggling, the blessings of the Holy Spirit can fill us and strengthen us and help us to pray. C.H. Spurgeon says, are you mourning over your own weakness? Take courage, for there must be a consciousness of weakness before the ward will give victory. Your emptiness is but the preparation for your being filled, and your casting down is but the making ready for your lifting up. I will read that again. I believe there is somebody out there today who needs lifting up. Spurgeon says, are you mourning or mourning over your own weakness? Take courage, for there must be a consciousness of weakness before the Lord will give the victory. Your emptiness is but the preparation for your being filled, and your casting down is but the making ready your lifting up. A song says, when I am weak, then I am strong. Grace is my shield and Christ my song. You might get some news about your family and you can't pray. You might feel pain in your heart for whatever. There are deep sighs and groans within you and you're struggling. But Romans 8, 26 says, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercede for us with groans that words cannot express. You're on a mountain and you're carrying a great big long, you, sorry. You, you're climbing up a mountain and you're carrying a great big log on your back. It's the same length as you. It's about a foot wide, half a foot wide. They're carrying this massive log up a mountain, and it seems you can't do it. But then four bodybuilders come along, and they take the log off your back. That is what the Spirit can do for you when you're carrying your burdens. Ephesians 6, 18, 19, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with kindness of prayers and requests. Pray in the Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to guide your prayers the holy spirit is god and god is inside you by his spirit your body is the temple of the holy spirit so allow the holy spirit to teach you to guide you and to lift you in prayer john 14 verse 16 17 and i will ask the father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever the spirit of truth the spirit of truth is with you today you are not alone john calvin said that though we are in every respect weak and have various infirmities there is yet sufficient protection in God's spirit to preserve us from falling and to keep us from being overwhelmed by any mass of evil Jude 20 but you dear friends build yourselves up in your most holy faith and pray in what in the Holy Spirit you will not sink, for the Holy Spirit is inside you as you believe in Christ. Romans 8, 27. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. You might say, well, Jay, I, 
I, I, it's not that I don't feel, it's not feeling weak that's my problem. I just baffled. I don't know what to pray. It's complex. It's difficult. What should I pray for? Well, that's where the you. The Spirit will search your heart and tell you what you need to pray for. Jeremiah 17 10. I, the Lord, search the heart and I examine the mind. Proverbs 17 3. The Lord tests the heart. 1 Chronicles 28 9. For the Lord searches every heart and understands every motive behind the thoughts. He knows your needs. He knows what you need to pray for. He knows what you need. And the Holy Spirit will help you to pray for the things that you need to be praying for in that complex situation. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11, it, said, it says, The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except what? The Spirit of God. One writer says this, so three persons are involved in our praying. First, we ourselves in our weakness do not know what to pray for. Second, the indwelling spirit helps us with speechless groans, but according to God's will. Thirdly, God the Father, who both searches our hearts and knows the spirit's mind, hears and answers accordingly. So how to pray in the spirit? Well, believe in the Holy Spirit. Believe that he exists inside you as you put faith in Christ. And expect the Holy Spirit to help you even when you just can't seem to go forward. Okay. God bless you. Uh, God is good. And uh, I'm just putting my sermon back in my sermon patch. And uh, so let's pray. Christ. We are not alone. You put the Holy Spirit within us, the counselor, the spirit of truth. And Father, we confess our own weakness and failure, and we believe in the Holy Spirit today. We believe in supernatural power. We believe in the Holy Spirit and what he is and who he is. He is God, and he can do more than we could ever ask or think. And so we trust in you today, O oh God, and we believe in the Holy Spirit. And when we can't pray, we trust that he will come and help us. So, Father, we commit these things to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Be with all those who listen to this video in your name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And I trust that this was a blessing to you. God bless.